Hello and welcome back to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Back to review the Premiership action over the weekend. Plenty of drama, plenty of talking points and plenty of goals for us to dissect and look back on as well as hearing from SPFL managers and players along the way. So we hope you do enjoy. There was five games on this weekend. St Mirren versus Hamilton kicking off the drama really before a ball was kicked with their game being postponed. Due to COVID-19 problems at St Mirren, we hope everyone affected by that at the Buddies is coping okay with it. It's been a tough few weeks for them. But the action kicked off regardless across the rest of the Premiership, starting on the Saturday. Kilmarnock losing 1-0 to Hibs. Motherwell returning to action. Their recent games against Kilmarnock and St Mirren postponed due to COVID problems, but they put that right behind them with a thumping 4-0 victory of Ross County. And then the other game on the Saturday was the Tayside derby between St Johnson and Dundee United. A 0-0 draw between them. Then on the Sunday, Celtic and Rangers' involvement in Europe meant that Aberdeen and Livingston had to wait an extra day to kick off their action for the weekend. Aberdeen getting a really decent 3 all draw with Celtic at Pataudry and Rangers proving just a bit too much for Livingston in the end, winning 2-0 against the Lions. But Livingston definitely put plenty of heart and effort into that one. So going to look back on that just now. We hope you do enjoy. Please do remember to subscribe to our channel. It would mean a lot to us. We're going to try and have our reviews uh, up on the Monday night around 6pm. And if you want to see our previews to the weekend's action, they'll usually be up on the Friday afternoon, same time ahead of the weekend's action. So do click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload on them, as well as our exclusive interviews and any other bits and balls we fit in along the way. This week, an exclusive interview if you're a Dundee fan watching this you can check out our interview with Sean Byrne that is coming later in the week that's a really interesting one that will be up on Thursday as well Hearts and Hibs take on the Edinburgh Derby this weekend Scottish semi-final action really big one that Scottish Cup match potentially the only Edinburgh Derby this season due to Hearts being in the championship but a tantalising one and a competitive one it will be nonetheless and we look to the game with John Hughes former Hibs manager and also a former Scottish Cup winner with Inverness, as well as Danny Granger, who helped Arch win their famous Scottish Cup over Hibs a few years ago now, back in 2012. Won't remind Hibs fans of the scoreline, Hearts know it all too well, and they too collide with me to look on the game and how they think the match will go. So do check that out when it comes out. That should be out later in the week. But to look on the Premiership action that's just been and gone for now, we had reporters at Kilmarnock versus Hibs, and we heard from Alex Dyer and Jack Ross at the end of that game. A 1-0 victory for Hibs, Kevin Nisbet's penalty, securing the victory for the High Bs, who are in really good form, just two defeats in the Premiership just now this season at the time of recording this. And it's been a really good start for them. Alex Dyer's team as well hit with the news that an SPFL disciplinary charge is coming their way due to potential breaches of the COVID guidelines which Alex Dyer refuses to believe is the case. He knows, in his opinion, that Kilmarnock didn't break any protocols. Jack Ross, meanwhile, very happy with his side's result. And here are the thoughts of the two managers following the game. The thing is, the, they'll have a lot, lot of work to do because I, I believe that it won't be the last. You know, we've had it, we've come down with it, St Mirren. There'll be other clubs up and down. You know, I hope, hope they don't, but... There's a, there's a chance that it will happen, and um, you know, so SPL's got to have a lot of work to do. Simple as that. But they're going to start blaming or having inquiries on every time someone goes down with this virus. And then they'll, they'll have a lot of work. To do. Done. We, look, we've followed protocols since we've come back. We've come back on the 15th of June. We're now um, coming to the end of October. You know, and um, we've had one out outbreak four months, five months. We've done our job. We've, you know, everyone behind the scenes at this football club worked hard to do the right things. And, um, you know, we've had an outbreak like any other industry has had up and down the country. And they want to have an inquiry and they want to put blame on somebody. Um, and it's not right. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, look back, there's, there's, you come in my changing room, you'll see how happy a place that is because um, it's not easy winning here. And, and we did that, and we played really well last week and created umpteen opportunities and drew the game. But today we had to tough it out and, and we did it, and yeah, I'm really, really pleased with that group. I think that's a sign of how far we've came that 
they can come here and um, tough a game out. Like, the defensive players have been have been terrific all season. We um, you know, we reflected on last season when, when the season was curtailed, and the one thing that we knew we had to do better at was defensively as a whole team. Cause we conceded too many goals last year, um, and our record this year is very good. Number of clean sheets defensively in general. And, you know, two, two back to back away clean sheets is very good and individually they've all performed well because they've played in their back three or their back four at times or I should say four or five off it um, and they're good, they're in a good place and um, I think you see the fruits of that hard work that they've put in the training ground in terms of their performance level. Looking back on Mullow versus Ross County we heard from numerous people after that game including Mullow manager Stephen Robinson man of the match on the day Tony Watt and Ross County boss Stuart Kettlewell and a thumping victory for the Steelmen, not played since a 5-1 defeat to Rangers, but they had been in good form prior to that. Crazy to think that only a couple of games ago was the Europa League qualifier in Israel against Hapoel Beersheba, but COVID problems have had their games postponed through no fault of their own, really. But again, they haven't played in a month regardless, and they returned with a great victory, looking really energetic, the likes of Devante Cole and his second debut for the Steelmen. Doing really well, but perhaps marred a wee bit by the injury of Trevor Carson, who looks to have picked up another bad knock. A really sore one for him, considering all that he's been through with his BDT fight in the last couple of seasons. But Tony Watt as well, grabbing headlines, and we'll hear from him shortly. A contribution to all four goals in the build-up to it. Scored one himself, won them a penalty. A really great display for him, showing the talent everybody knows he has, but perhaps hasn't quite shown it consistently throughout his career. Stuart Kettlewell, meanwhile, disappointed, of course, with the manner of defeat in Lancashire. And here's your post-match reaction from Stephen Robinson, Tony Watt and Stuart Kettlewell. I think um, the circumstances in which we won, you know, we've, we've actually got seven defenders missing now. If I include young David Devine in that, who was on the bench today, but he's not playing for three months, you know, he's only trained a week. Um, and then two goalkeepers now with Foxy and now Trevor as well. So... And then circumstances not playing for a month, you know, I have to say the credit to the players and the coaching staff for the fitness levels they've come back with because you can put sessions on, players have to apply themselves and we've got a group of boys that, that do that consistently and they've they've been able to maintain their fitness levels and shortness and, and their performance, you know, got their, their just rewards. You know, I have to say credit to them. For me, the outstanding performance, you know, Mark O'Hara was asked to play in a position today um, to deal with Ross Stewart. You know a bit of physicality, and and he did, and he's an unsung hero. Gets on with it, not given the credit he, he deserves. And and Tony was was unplayable. If he stays as fit as we've got him now, he's a very good footballer. Is that, that the best that? you've seen him play? Um, that's the best all round performance. When he come, he wasn't fit enough. He told me he was. He told me he's fit enough pre season. He wasn't. Um, and now we've finally, I'm sure he'll admit that we've got him to the levels of fitness that allows his talent to shine. And it's now just keeping him in the team, keeping him fit, keeping him pushing himself. Um, there's a very, very good footballer. There's never really been any doubt about that. So we're pleased for him. He's a, he's a good boy as well, and he's bought into what we're trying to do. And you know, he's a big asset for us at the moment. Hi, hi, it's Trevor Carson. We don't know yet. He's he's going to have a scan later tonight um, or Monday morning I'm not sure what the physio said to me now but um, he will have a scan it doesn't look great for Trevor to come on yeah we think we think it was his knee I didn't actually see the incident I, I just seen him head the ball away so I didn't actually see what happened afterwards so it's his knee um, we're, we're just hoping it's it's not as bad as first feared um, for, for all reasons you know but credit to Big Aaron and that was the reason we signed him so, uh, <laughs> we played well we we fancied ourselves to be fair we've been positive we we uh, the manager's been putting us through the paces, obviously replicating the match that we've missed, the two matches that we've missed, and I feel like we were on a, a bit of positive momentum. We gave a good showing in Israel, and then the Rangers gave us a blip. We had a few bad decisions going against us, whether it was right or wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we had a a tough time, and I think we had a good run before that. Even in Hapoel, we felt good, and it killed us a bit with the four weeks off. But obviously, we came back. We were confident there's not really any negativity in the place which is is good and we all feel fit so we felt a result of that was coming for weeks and it just happened today. Yeah that's what I was putting myself under pressure we spoke about that I spoke to a few people about that and no it's it's good it's it's what you need you need to go off the mark and I said before I left the house today I said uh, I'd score but I said if I don't score and we win then I'll take that that's what it's all about it's all about climbing up the table it's as I say, individuals get recognised if a team do well, and, and I feel like we'll do really well. Yeah, come on and score the goal. Yeah, that's it. I feel like I feel like I'm working hard every day, and 
and you can't get unlucky if you keep working hard and the faith of the club's put in me has been brilliant, the manager's been brilliant and I just hope it keeps going and I hope we go on a good run because we all deserve it, everybody is. Uh, major disappointment, um, I've just said that to the players there, I feel like I'll forever fight it um, in terms of being asked questions about our fragilities defensively, conceding goals, being behind in games and looking a wee bit soft and I've just said to the players there that I can't, I can't defend that, I can't defend it when we see what happens in the second half and how loose we are, uh, you know, even Motherwell score a second goal, um, it's a point for us to, to regroup, consolidate and see if we can find a route back into the game and that's always our message, um, but I think you could see by some of the opportunities that were gifted and some of the slack play that there is that, that mental aspect of it, I suppose that um, we did become a little bit soft, um, especially in the second half and it frustrates me because I thought that there was plenty to, to look at and plenty of positives to take from the first half, we spoke about how we could affect the game on the front foot um, we've seen a few opportunities from, from what happened in the first half and I think having one cleared off the line at the end of the, the first half probably gave us that wee bit of, uh, that wee bit of hope and that wee bit of belief. Um, but certainly, Big Alex going to ground inside the box for the penalty. Um, it then starts to make it a mountain to climb. I think we had two or three opportunities right after that as well to, to bring ourselves back into a game. We didn't take them and then you see that we're punished, obviously. So, Seriously disappointing day for us all, um, the scoreline tells you that, but as I say, overall when you look at the opportunities that we started to hand up, then that's, that, that's a real frustration for me. Turning our attentions away from Lanarkshire, we'll look to St Johnson Dundee United, and in all honesty, not too much to talk about in this one, not really many chances. Dundee United again, struggling in front of goal, they seem okay at the back, Benjamin Segrist proving his capabilities as one of the league's best keepers, Mickey Mellon lavish in his praise for him in the build-up to this game and he proved that again, making multiple stops to make sure St Johnson didn't get the three points. I don't think anybody could have really complained if St Johnson had nicked it in the end. Dundee United not really creating a whole lot in attack. Lawrence Shankland perhaps expected to score all the goals for Dundee United this season, completely isolated up top, not really getting a touch of the ball, never mind a chance on goal, alongside Mark McNulty as well. So, Despite the fact they have got two clinical strikers at this level, they're not really getting the service to them. That said, Shankland still probably has a couple of doubters, given the fact that he's not played a full Premiership season consistently, but un undoubted that he can score goals, stepped up to the Scotland squad. He just needs more service. St. Johnson, they've lost games like this already this season. They've lost a string of 1-0 games, 2-1 games, things like that. But they held on at this time for the draw, albeit... Not able to score again, but after a recent haul of goals, you would like to think that their goal-scoring problems from earlier this campaign are behind them. But I think St. Johnson will perhaps be slightly disappointed that they never got the three points in this Dundee United. Another point for them on a weekend where they didn't play particularly well, it could be worse. Uh, so looking on the Sunday games, Aberdeen versus Celtic, kicking that one off in the lunchtime kickoff in the North East. And it was a great game for the neutral. Lewis Ferguson opening the scoring for Aberdeen for a second half whirlwind of goals after a pretty drab first half. Not a lot happened. Aberdeen executed their game plan well, albeit wasn't a particularly exciting one, but it didn't have to be. They were really resolute and solid, but Celtic came out with a point to prove in the second half. They got one back. Callum McGregor making it one each before the introduction of Sam Cosgrove and Scott Wright completely changed the game for Aberdeen when they were on the ropes a wee bit. Ryan Hedges getting a goal after Scott Wright robbed. Shane Duffy of possession. Sam Cosgrove shot blocked and then it just sort of fell on a Ryan Hedges' sort of thigh area perfectly and it rolled into the net. But Celtic looked to have grabbed all three points and then two quick fire goals from them. Lee Griffiths scoring a really brilliant goal and then Ryan Christie scoring a penalty just a couple of minutes later. But again, Lewis Ferguson was the man from the spot. Callum McGregor cynically bringing down Conor McLennan as he burst through in goal and looked very likely to put away an easy finish beyond Scott Bain. But Chopped down in the box, Cal McGregor perhaps lucky to stay on the park, albeit it wouldn't have made much of a difference at that stage in the game. And then Lewis Ferguson dispatching his penalty to seal a point for Aberdeen. And answering a few questions people had of them against Celtic. They haven't been great in recent times. I think they lost nine in a row, eight in a row to Celtic prior to this at Pataudry. But... I mean, they, on another day, they probably could have got three points. Celtic, whilst they looked fairly decent in attack, looked very shaky at the back. Aberdeen, fairly solid throughout. They'll be slightly disappointed with the nature of some of the goals they conceded, albeit one was a penalty could have been prevented and 
Lee Griffiths' goal was a very decent strike, albeit perhaps it could have pressed him a bit higher. But, albeit a very decent point for them regardless, and they'll be taking encouragement from that into the Scottish Cup match next week. Celtic are looking to continue their domestic dominance. Aberdeen proven that they can match Celtic on their day and they perhaps can nick a place in a Scottish Cup final. That will remain to be seen next weekend. And then the final game of the weekend, Rangers played Livingston 2-0 to the Gers at Ibrox. It was done in 16 minutes. Joe Rebo scored in the first one after eight minutes and then J- uh, James Tavernier's lob into Jermaine Defoe. A brilliant ball and an even better finish from the 38-year-old, scoring his 300th club goal of his career. And at that point, it was just too much for Livingston, who did well to make sure Rangers have proven that they can put teams to the sword. But Livingston contained them very well throughout the rest of the match, put plenty of effort in it, but just no real cutting edge in the final third. They did have a couple of chances. They did hit the post in the first half, but it just wasn't enough in the end. Eventually losing out, they'll not be too disheartened by it. They will probably take positives from the fact they contained Rangers for large spells, although a slow start did eventually cross the lines as they look forward to their game next weekend now against Mullow. Decent run coming up for them. I think they play plenty of teams sort of outside the top four just now in Scotland between now and December, so plenty of opportunities for them yet to pick up some points. Well, that's all we've got time for on our review. We hope you have enjoyed. Please do remember to subscribe to the channel. As I've already said, plenty of content, especially coming this week with the Scottish Cup matches, Premiership matches still going on, and also the Championship in League One as well, League Two also back in full flow. So you can get that content on our website, our YouTube channel, and our Twitter. We're very active in all three, so please do remember to check them all out and follow us on all your respective platforms, etc. But that's all from me just now. Until next time, take it easy.